So we're going to do a level of rock first. Yes. This side is the problem. 450 peak with plenty of violence. The light is fantastic, the new bars, but I am concerned. Joe, that new chalice we put in? The regal is munching on it. Last episode, Michelle and the team worked on filling the gap on the left side of the 17,000 gallon tank. But while moving some of the rocks around, one of them slipped, causing one of the coral to break. Oh my God! You can check out the episode with the link in the description below. After the coral crash, Michelle quickly regrouped and set the broken coral aside to continue her mission. Installing the carbon fiber bar is a little bit more pressing at the moment, so putting the coral to the side to take care of it later is no problem. Hearing the commotion, Patty and Joe both come to help. They lend a hand with installing the carbon fiber bar. So we're gonna do a level of rock first, yes. and then attach the branch to it. Or we could pop the or, or we could glue with pieces overhanging. All you have to do is sit. This side is the problem. Joe, using his carpentry background, he comes with a fresh perspective and formulates a new plan with Michelle. You had to go in, in there, yeah. and then you had it on the front of the gym side, but it's been down. Michelle drops back down with a larger rock. And using nothing but hand signals and lasers, Patty, Michelle, and Joe work on getting the fiberglass bar into place. After years of diving, the polo team has gotten pretty creative with their hand signals, and at this point, they kind of have their own language. And I just sit tight into right there. Sit right in there. There you go. Michelle zip ties the rock down and finally fills the gap. It's a pretty unique solution to a pretty unique tank. Now she can shift her attention to the broken coral. Lucky for Polo Reef, Michelle is a true pro and pieces the coral back together with glue like nothing ever happened. Definitely not the first time she's done this and it certainly won't be the last. Andrew and the team are super excited to have bridged the gap with rock. It's been an eyesore for them for some time. The next step is to start adding coral. With this problem solved and the coral crisis avoided, the team heads right to the back to start on project number two for the day. And this project, it's all about lighting. The name of the light game today is blending. The two 280s are already beautiful tanks, but Andrew, he believes they can be even better. John and Joe begin working on possible solutions to get them looking the same. Andrew pops in with some ideas of his own to help with the blending. You know the Leo omelet where they scrambled the eggs with the locks, eggs and onions and stuff? We're scrambling lights like that. We're trying to make the spectrum uh, more fuller and, and we added some bars that will do that. And so the scrambling begins. The team works on possible placements of these new bars to help blend and intensify certain areas of the tank. You ever heard of musical chairs? Well, this is musical light bars. 450, so it's got a 450 peak with plenty of violence, right? right? Mm -hmm. With the guidance from Andrew, the trio works on mapping out what lights will go where. Once they see them on the left tank, Andrew has one other idea. What is that sky blue one? We have another one? Yeah. Put it over this tank now because I think that's gonna make the biggest difference in this tank. With the lights mapped out, the team will get to installing them later on. Meanwhile, back outside, a crew is hard at work taking care of Polo Pond. In case you missed it, Polo Pond welcomed their championship koi a few weeks ago, and they're all doing very well. You can catch the episode with the link in the description below. Today, the crew is on site to help start the process of putting up the winter tent. This is the third year in a row where Polo has tented the pond. They do this to regulate the temperatures for the championship koi during the winter months. Like any other livestock at Polar Reef, Andrew wants to make sure that everyone is comfortable. While the tent is being put up outside, the polo team is at the 2,500 gallon tank upstairs. Their next task of the day is to capture the last masked angelfish. Currently we're trying to catch the remaining personatus out of the 2,500. He's just showing signs of uh, malnourishment. Months ago, Polo Reef had the honor of putting these very rare fish into the 2,500 gallon tank. After removing the other mast angels for issues, they noticed the last one in the 2,500 gallon tank is starting to show signs that it's not doing well. The team gets together to try to map out a plan to catch the fish. History has shown us that at Polo Reef, this is not an easy task. Today's plan is to use a crab trap, put it in the bottom of the tank, and add some food. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, the plan turned out to be not so simple after all. 
After waiting hours, they noticed the fish starting to get stressed out and decided to give it a rest. They head back downstairs to continue working on the lighting for the two 280s. The next step in the lighting process is installation. John, Joe, and Yellison grab their tools and begin the process. With a little bit of drilling and some elbow grease, they're able to finally complete the installation of the new lighting. Joe, you're not gonna believe it, but that new chalice we put in, the regal is munching on it. Oh yeah, still. you could see. Yeah, the fish or we move the coral? I think it's easier to coral. We'll move the coral. <laughs> let's, let's move the coral because that fish is spectacular. Yeah. At right. the end of the day, there are certain fish that are just partially reef safe and will eat coral, especially new ones. They like to taste. And uh, in this case, this regal angel is spectacular. Miss Bar from Biota. We're going to leave him in the tank and just move the coral to a safer place that has uh, no fish that will eat it. Yeah. Let's move it to the 300 LPS. Pink bull we can't let that this. I know, we gotta take care of them. Gotta take care of the bull <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice, beautiful shimmer. See the paint from here, it's great. Well, growth, that's 100 far light, it's perfect. With the lights blended, it's only half the battle with the two 280s. If you remember last week, the team found some high levels of metals in the systems and began their investigation. As of now, the team is no closer to finding a culprit. The light is fantastic, the new bars, but I am concerned that we're changing spectrum and changing light intensity at the same time as we're still chasing down these metals. And I wonder if it's just too much instability and the corals are going to react negatively. I'm going to wait for the next ICP test to arrive any day. So stay tuned because next week we tear down lots of big equipment that is feeding our water source, including engines, heat exchanges, and we go on our wabbit hunt for metals. With the installation of the lights complete, it's a great way to end the day. The next morning, Phoebe and the polo team waste no time getting right back to work. They head up to the 2,500 gallon tank, hoping to catch the last mass angel that's showing signs of fatigue. With the trap in place, the team waits patiently, hoping that this will do the trick. Time is of the essence. Meanwhile, back downstairs, a huge project is about to take place. This dive will mark a historic moment for Polo Reef. The colonies are getting so big that they're shadowing others or shading others, so we're going to trim a little bit some of the big colonies. Addie drops into the tank and begins her special mission. When coral grow this large, it means they're really happy. Some of these colonies are just massive, and the team will get to work fragging some of the larger colonies. Want to take some, something from here? They're touching. Grabbing one by one, Patty starts to hand the coral up to Max and over to Joe, where he's operating the bandsaw to cut the frags. Once they begin the process, it's like a never-ending cycle. The coral just keep coming and coming. It's a great problem to have. With the larger colonies taken out and Joe cutting them up, Patty decides to head over to the fiberglass bar to make some final adjustments to close the gap once and for all. With the rock in place, the team can finally fill the gap with coral. This marks a huge milestone for the Polo Reef team, and they couldn't be more proud. With the 17,000 gallon tank getting a quick trim, that means there's more space. And as we all know, when Andrew sees space, he sees opportunity. They place a few more corals, and after hours in the water, Patty is completely exhausted and decides to call it a day. Well, big improvement. The gap will be ready for coral. The structure is there now. We will be uh, taking PAR readings around the gap to check and make sure that the coral that Patty just put there is safe and good. But this is a big, big change. And the first time I've looked at this tank without uh, an eyesore. So I'm very happy with the work. We still may need to cut the top coral, but um, yeah, this is uh, the beginning of something important happening here. Joe, I want to see the frogs that we cut today. Um, so we got some here. Nice. Okay, so we'll save some of these pieces for my buddy, Reefer. There are a couple yeah. of Reefers that uh, I owe some frags to yeah. that we've been swapping. Yep. Some local Reefers. That's a great thing to do. Uh, swap corals and... They give you something, you give them something. That's it. It's, it's, it's the reefer's code. It's the reefer's code, yeah. You know, this is the beginning. 
just the, the beginning. This is a, yeah, the tank this, is starting to really get is, overgrown. This is the tip of the iceberg. I got a haircut today, and so did the tank. <laughs> the 17,000 gallon tank is in a beautiful place and super full at the moment. Congratulations to the team for completing another mission, filling a gap, and finally being able to frag some of the large colonies. Great work. While Patty and the team were working on the 17,000 gallon tank, John was upstairs and surprises everyone with the catch of the day. So I, I fed him and he came up to eat and I just nabbed him one shot. I was closing up the tank for the night and I figured I'd give it one more shot. With the mass angel finally captured, Alex the vet takes a moment to check it out. He also fills us in on what's going on. There's no evidence of infectious disease um, other than, unfortunately, chronic negative energy balances, which means the fish isn't getting enough energy for the amount of energy that it's using. Yes, they were eating, but for the amount of energy at the temperature that they're living at now and the amount of swimming they were doing, they weren't eating enough. So now we're taking this one, putting it in a system that's colder, metabolism slows down a little bit, and it's not swimming against as much flow, and it's not competing for as much food. So hopefully we can reduce that chronic negative energy imbalance and make fatten up the fish a little bit. The Personatus angel is near and dear to Andrew and a very rare fish. The captive breeding program for this fish has ended and they're unable to be taken from the wild because they're now a protected species. This makes them extremely rare and Andrew will go to any lengths to keep them healthy. As the sun sets on another long day at Polo Reef, the tanks are calm again. The fiberglass bar is secure, the coral gaps filled, and the mast angels, they're finally in good hands. What started with the broken coral ends with growth both for the reef and the team behind it. Every setback here becomes a chance to learn, to rebuild, and to keep pushing this living ecosystem forward. Look at this. I can't believe what happened in here. Why do I tinker with...